Everybody ready? Good morning and thank you for being here. Joining me today is Florida's Attorney General Ashley Moody and Assistant Special Agent in Charge of DEA Tampa, Mike Ferguson. We're here to announce the results of Operation Checkmate, an investigation into organized gang activities in the southern portion of Hillsborough County involving the trafficking and sale of narcotics. In a game of chess, checkmate is a term used when the king on the chessboard cannot escape. It's game over, and in this operation, checkmate is very fitting, as the Latin kings and their criminal cohorts did not escape. They are under arrest. It is game over for them. Nearly three months ago, detectives became aware of a narcotics distribution network operating within the Waimama area. And through the course of street level purchases and moving to larger trafficking amounts, we focused our intelligence efforts on identifying the hierarchy of this violent and extremely profitable narcotics enterprise. At the top were two high ranking members of the Latin Kings, one of the most prominent gangs who operate worldwide and have no value for human life. With the help of 19 other criminals, the Latin Kings were aggressively trafficking massive amounts of narcotics with no regard for the devastating and deadly effects their drugs have on destroying lives and generating hundreds of thousands of dollars each month by selling their poison in our community. This past Thursday, detectives and our DEA partners execute, executed multiple court authorized search warrants at five homes in the Waimama area that were being used as storage and distribution points by the Latin Kings for their narcotics operation. We seized nearly a million dollars worth of narcotics that, that included five kilograms of fentanyl, which is enough to kill every single person here in Hillsborough County twice. And we know the potential deadly effects are far greater. Think about this. How many overdoses and lives lost right here in Tampa can be attributed to large amounts of fentanyl they've already distributed and sold. We also recovered two kilograms of cocaine, two, kilo, two kilograms of methamphetamine, one kilogram of heroin, and two pounds of marijuana. We seized 15 firearms from handguns, shotguns, and assault rifles, and a stolen 357 revolver in the wrong hands Imagine the violence this arsenal could be responsible for. I am eager for our firearms lab to determine if there is a nexus between these guns and the unsolved crimes the Latin Kings may have been involved with. We also recovered a stolen BMW M6, seized a brand new $115,000 Mercedes Benz they purchased in cash using their drug money along with two other vehicles. We also recovered Louis Vuitton and Gucci handbags, designer shoes, and jewelry, all valued at nearly a half a million dollars. Two of the more significant and valuable intelligence items we recovered, the Latin Kings organizational chart and operational bylaws, a so-called operational manual. There are very few of these copies in existence, and they are fiercely protected by the gang members. Detectives also located nearly 100 roosters across the five search warrant locations. It is a known fact the Latin Kings have an affinity with the barbaric hobby of cockfighting, and investigators are now looking into the welfare of the, bo of the birds. Arrested are two of the top Latin King gang leaders, 32-year-old Fidencio Robles, who is known as a stone, one of the top five ranking gang Latin King gang members in Florida, and 30-year-old Omar Bravo, the head narcotics supplier for the entire state of Florida. Omar Bravo was so brazen with his status and contempt for law enforcement, detectives uncovered he was posting images of the cash, expensive jewelry, and firearms he had on social media, almost in an effort to taunt law enforcement. We call checkmate for these Latin Kings. Both are under arrest and charged with a number of crimes, including armed trafficking in large amounts of fentanyl, cocaine, 
methamphetamine, and heroin, felons in possession of firearms and ammunition, and potential charges under the organized crime statute. These gang leaders and their counterparts are violent individuals who will not hesitate to inflict violence to get whatever they want. We know just recently two gang members were behind a shooting at a martini lounge right here in Ybor City, where six people were shot and one was killed, a 30-year-old innocent man who was celebrating a wedding. As a community, we can all sleep a little easier knowing these dangerous criminals are behind bars. These gang members can no longer relentlessly terrorize our community and sell drugs in the neighborhoods where our children live and play. For now, the reign of this violence and brutal destruction of the Latin, that, the, that the Latin Kings cause is over. I want to take a moment and commend our detectives who work this case around the clock with such energy and determination, and our partners at the DEA, Assistant Special Agent in Charge Mike Ferguson and his entire team who were tremendous in supporting Operation Checkmate. Collectively, this group of law enforcement professionals who were working undercover, undercover and clearly in the face of absolute danger did an outstanding job. I want to take a moment and thank each and every one of you. The charges these criminals are facing are serious. And someone who is unafraid to put violent criminals behind bars is our Florida Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Her office will be prosecuting and holding these criminals accountable for the poison they were selling, the lives they shattered, and the community that's been traumatized. At this point, I'd like to invite our Attorney General, Ashley Moody, to say a few words. General. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I'll begin by commending the DEA for your partnership uh, in this case. These operations where you have a federal agency working aggressively in tandem with a local agency uh, and a statewide prosecutor, we can be incredibly effective. And this case is an example of that, and we appreciate all of the agents and detectives and deputies working side by side so aggressively. Uh, the sheriff and I spoke very early upon my becoming the attorney general, and we both agreed. We have the same mindset that this, this trend that is being pushed by many interest groups that uh, we should go lighter on those that are trafficking drugs for some reason because it is not associated with violent crime that's a farce, that's a fallacy, and today's operation and announcement demonstrates that. The arrests of 21 individuals, many of them had violent histories, convicted felons. They need to be pursued and taken out of our communities. If someone tells you and shows you that they are not going to be a positive influence or a contributing individual in a community, they need to be sought after and taken out of the communities so that the communities can thrive and prosper in a stable, safe environment. And that's what these guys and gals sign up for when they take the oath to protect and serve. These were, was not an easy case, it was very dangerous. I commend those that were undercover. I also commend those that went in on these search warrants because as you know, right here in Florida, we have experienced when officers go in to apprehend violent individuals, it has turned tragic and deadly. And I am so glad, honored, proud that people still sign up for these jobs to protect the communities and the citizens of Florida. It's an honor uh, to work with you and serve you as your Attorney General. We know that these gangs that push violence and drugs in our community are affiliated with Mexican drug cartels. We know the lack of any security at our southern border has only acted to serve as steroids to these gangs that have infiltrated our state. And unfortunately, the men and women that wear a badge are on the front lines dealing with that day in and day out. They put their lives on the line to protect us, not just from violent repeat offenders who have no regard for human life, but also from deadly fentanyl 
that is killing tens of thousands of Americans every year. And this is a result of their courageous work. Large amounts of illicit substances were seized. That is now off our streets, where it no longer poses a threat to our community members. Authorities obtained, as the sheriff said, enough fentanyl to kill 263,000 people. So those watching today that are in the Tampa Bay community, let me just put that in perspective. All the communities of East and Southern Hillsborough County, including Wyamama, Sun City Center, Ruskin, Apollo Beach, Gibsonton, Plant City, Dover, and Brandon. We have traced these drugs as far as Texas and California now, and there is a high likelihood that it is straight from the Mexican drug cartels and the wide open border. And it will just keep coming in unless we are more aggressively to cut off that source and lessen the surge of violence and illicit drugs and deadly fentanyl facing our local and statewide law enforcement officials. Last year, we showed a significant increase in opioid fentanyl related deaths, even right here in Hillsborough County. So I applaud all of the officers that work diligently to execute this dangerous operation. As you know, Florida is a law and order state. As Attorney General, I will aggressively pursue with our attorneys uh, to take these uh, violent criminals, repeat offenders off the streets. Uh, we will do that in tandem with our law enforcement partners. And let me close by again, and I've, I feel like I've stood at this podium with with uh, ASAC Ferguson and Sheriff Cronister numerous times pleading with parents and those that may be struggling with a substance abuse addiction. The fentanyl, and now some substances that are even deadlier than fentanyl, which we are working so hard, called nitazines, to schedule now, they will kill with one pill, one use. If you are struggling right now, get help because the drugs that people are ingesting and they have in the past are now being laced with fentanyl and it can kill you. One use can kill. Parents talk to your children. Pills that they may get from friends thinking that they're Adderall or Xanax or other pills, one pill can kill. The fastest growing demographic of those losing their lives to overdose are ages five to 14, five to 14. Again, I am grateful that we have such dedicated, aggressive, cooperative law enforcement agents and deputies here in this area. This is a testament that what can be done if you remain focused on the safety of your communities and law and order. And I know we have some areas in this nation, even here in this state, with weaker on crime approaches that turn a blind eye to the history of repeat violent, dangerous offenders not under my watch, not under the watch of these two folks standing with me today. Thank you again for those that are here today to not only help us show this community and what law enforcement is doing for them to keep them safe, but to help us warn families and individuals, get help now, protect yourselves, getting help, warning your children will save lives. Thank you, General Moody. Now the general and I will take any questions. So as we move through the charges, sometimes the charges that we arrest folks on will increase as we gather additional evidence, but these will be first degree felonies, certainly, um, as we show the, the gang activity and the cooperation, uh, they're looking at major time based on their um, past uh, offenses, many will look at life. Yeah, great question. That's exactly what we're hoping for. We're hoping by doing a, a deep dive, uh, intelligence dive into this, we'll be able to gather that information, uh, how they operate, how they work, uh, some of the initiations, and the list goes on and on and on. If we can better understand an organization, we can certainly launch a better counterattack on how to remove them from our society.
Yeah, I feel pretty confident with some of the shootings that we've had here um, in Hillsborough County that some of these firearms are going to be linked to, to that. And with our new firearms lab, uh, we'll get that information back. I, with the with the sheer amount and volume of firearms, it'll certainly probably take maybe a month or two, even with the great work that our lab does. But I, I would be I would I'll come I'll come in front of this microphone and stand corrected because I feel confident that these firearms are going to be linked back to other some some crimes that are being used uh, some of these other shootings that are being involved it wasn't too long ago we were sitting here talking about the execution that happened out in uh, the town and country area that was retribution from crimes that happened in the city all be, being collectively linked together when it starts when this retribution and vengeful acts continue to to uh, decimate a community. There's no doubt also that some shootings that occur, some of our own homicides happen from, from, from small amounts of marijuana. And, and it's not the drugs, it's the violence that comes along with the, with the distribution of these drugs is what we need to be con uh, so cognizant of, and, cognizant of and, and, and how it destroys our community. So there's no doubt that these firearms will be linked to some other violent crimes in our community and beyond. Still getting to the bottom of that. Still, uh, you know, again, we just did the search warrants on Thursday. There's so much evidence to come through, and these detectives, you know, they did the the heavy lift, and now here's the here's the uh, the latent part of it, going back and seeing exactly how long. But I can tell you, too long, too long. When you start thinking about the the amount of fentanyl on the top of a pin cap can kill somebody, and we have five kilograms of it, enough to kill 2.5 million people, uh, uh, and that's just what we seized. How long have they been in operation? How many lives have they affected? How many overdoses have been attributed to this to this gang and and the poison that they're that they're devastating our community with? We'll certainly continue to work through that. There's no doubt that there's additional charges coming as they continue to come through this evidence. There's always some other individuals that they'll that will end up discovering that we're a part of this as we work through this. So there's no doubt that this is this is just the beginning.